Good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at La Crescenta Presbyterian Church. And a special welcome if you're joining us here for the first time. We hope your spirit will be lifted, drawing closer to God this hour as we sing his praise, listen to the reading of his word, and receive instruction in the paths of righteousness. Let's go to God with a quick prayer. Gracious, loving God, we bow before you, seeking your grace this morning. Be with each of us as we worship you this hour. The psalmist says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Let's do just that. Welcome. We hope you have a great morning. I have some exciting news to tell you. We have officially voted in our new senior pastor. 
His family showed up last week, preached the sermon, and we all gathered around to take a vote. And now we have a new pastor that's a part of this church. This is a wonderful and exciting and hopeful time for us. We just want to thank the PNC for their hard work, for being a part of this process and allowing uh, uh, the, the time and effort for them to come in and bring in our new senior pastor. He will begin in July 1st, following up with our first Sunday on July 2nd. Also, on May 21st, we will be having Strike Up the Band. This is where we have a 10-piece music festival where we will gather around and just listen and enjoy. Donations will be recommended for an individual for $15 and $30 for the family. This will go towards scholarships for students for the Deacon Scholarship Fund. So it will be a blessing if you guys would come out and we could just gather together and just enjoy time with one another. Also, on Wednesday, May 24th at 5.30 p.m., we will be having a church gathering picnic for Peak. This will be the kickoff of our summertime. And man, I know you guys are just dealing with the rain and the cold. So this is actually an extra time for us just to be outdoors together and just have games and food. And it will be a wonderful experience. And also, one last thing is that if this is your first time here attending our service, whether it's on per in person or in line, we have a way to connect with you. We have, for those in person, we have connect cards in front of you that you can sign up and put in the behind at the back of the sanctuary or if you are watching from home or want to use more of a digital platform you can sign up in the bottom of our website at lcpc.org well that's all the announcements this week we hope you have a great service You have 
my confidence is your faithfulness and I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness and I Let us pray. Lord, it is a joy that you are working in this community. It is a joy that we see your hand in place as changes are happening around us. And though changes are happening, we may be scared or fearful, but remind us that you are with us. And as there are changes happening around us, let let change happen within us as we may be sinning. Let this be a time for us to confess so we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ. We give you praise and honor and glory for who you are. And may this worship be a moment for us to connect with you, God, in your holy name. Amen. Well, good to see you. Hope you're well as you're in your homes watching this. And uh, we are jumping back into our sermon series in the sermon that, uh, that Jesus gave, a teaching that Jesus gave in response to his disciples, his first disciples, asking him to teach them how to pray. Because they had watched Jesus, they've noticed that he goes off and he prays, and he comes back and he's filled with the power of God, and the, the love and the power of God flows through him. So they want to learn how to have that same connection with God the way Jesus experienced. So they ask the question, and Jesus is glad to answer the question. And, and that's what we see in what we know as the Lord's Prayer. So today we're getting into the very beginning of the prayer. It's the first verse. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to read with you the whole passage. Each week we're going to read the whole passage. It's, it's Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And so I'm going to read it, and then we're going to come back and repeat the verse we're focusing on today, and then we'll talk about it. So this is God's word. This is Matthew 6, beginning in verse 9. And Jesus says, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And again, what we're focusing on today is verse nine. It's the first petition. And remember that when Jesus taught this, the the, tense that is used here, the verb is an imperative. It's a command. He's teaching us to command Almighty God to do these things. And so we're looking at the very first petition where he says, this is how he starts. He starts with the words, our Father, in heaven. And then here's the first petition. Hallowed be your name. 
So let's pray, and then we'll, we'll talk about what this means. Loving God, thank you so much for your word to us. Jesus, thank you for how you were so available to your first disciples, how you were so intentional about how you modeled uh, who you as God were, who God actually is. You wanted them to come to understand, Lord God, who you actually are. In everything you did, everything you said, um, and, and it's the same for us. And so in this prayer, God, you're, you're wanting, you are wanting them and you're wanting us to learn how to know who you really are so we can connect with Almighty God the way, Jesus, you connected with the Father. And so as we get into this today, I pray that you would guide us and you would use this teaching to really help us understand better who you are and, and what you're inviting us into. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So Jesus starts this teaching on prayer by focusing on something that mattered most to him. And it makes sense. The very first thing he focuses on is on the thing he talked about most. And you may know this. The thing Jesus talked about more than anything else in his teachings throughout his three years doing his ministry was on what we would call the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And, and he also came, as I just prayed, to reveal who God actually was in everything he said, everything he did. He was God in human flesh. And, and so when he starts the prayer, it makes sense that he starts by naming his father in the way he experienced God the Father in this intimate relationship that Jesus had had for all eternity with the Father, the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Spirit, the Trinity, and the inner working of the Trinity. And so when Jesus starts his prayer, he starts with this title, Father. And what's really interesting about this title is in the Aramaic or the Greek, the original language, the word he uses for Father, and it's the word he always used when he talks about his relationship with the Father, is the word Abba. And I don't know if you know what that word means in the Greek or the Aramaic, but it, the, probably the closest translation in the English for us is what we would use when we're talking about our father, when we would call our father daddy, daddy. Now, when you hear that title daddy for a father, when you think of a child calling their father daddy, what kind of father do you think that father is for that child, that that child is saying, Daddy, do you think of a father who's inaccessible, who's judgmental, who's harsh, um, who's performance-oriented, who, who's focused on discipline and making sure that child is behaving properly? You know, see, too often, I think that's how we think of God. We think of God as evaluating us and and uh, in his own, quote, mind, deciding whether or not we're measuring up uh, to be the people God wants us to be. I think so often people get God wrong. And so what Jesus is doing here right away and using that word that he used when he prayed to the Father is the, it's the he's inviting us into the same understanding of who God actually is when he uses his title, Abba, Daddy, Father. When I think of that, that title, Abba, or Daddy, I think of a child. I imagine a young child coming home from a hard day at school, maybe being bullied by other kids on the playground, dealing with all the insecurities that we deal with when we're kids out in the world, and coming home to their Abba, Father, a place of safety, a, a place of nurture, a place of support, a place of unconditional love, a place where this child can't wait to get to, a place where this child longs to be, longs to be in the presence of his or her Abba, Father, Daddy, because that child's experience of that Abba, that Father, that Daddy, is, is nothing but a safe place. And it's very predictable for that child because that's the experience they've had with that kind of father, that this father has been nothing but loving and helpful 
and all that that child needs in the face of all that they're having to navigate in this harsh world. You see, even in that name, Jesus, how he starts the prayer, he's holding up, he's trying to help us begin to understand who the Father, God the Father, actually is, not who we think God is. And I, with this in mind, I, I want to read some passages to you of Jesus from his life when he's talking about his father, his experience with his father. You remember the story of when uh, Mary and Joseph, when Jesus was just a, 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 a young boy. It's one of those rare stories before he began his ministry. And they go to Jerusalem. It's one of the festivals. The whole family and all the neighbors go to Jerusalem for one of the high festivals. And they the festival's over, they're going home, and they realize Jesus is not with them, uh, this young uh, teenage boy. And so they're worried. They're like any parent. They're wondering, oh my gosh, where's Jesus? Nobody knew where he was. So they go back to Jerusalem. They look all over Jerusalem. Finally, they go to the temple, and they find him in the temple teaching the religious leaders, the ones who had been taught how to teach the Word of God from the time they were young, and these are the older scholars of the Bible. Jesus is sitting there answering their questions, and here comes Mary and Joseph, and they, and they scold him. Like, you know, if you had that experience as a parent when you're anxious because you don't know where your child is, and when you find them, you tend to kind of are kind of harsh because you're worried. You know, we, we act out of fear often in ways that's not loving. And so they kind of scold him and say, Jesus, what were you thinking? Why are you here? Why did you leave us? And this is what Jesus says. This is in Luke chapter 2, 49. Jesus says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? So already as a young boy, he has this experience of the father as that place he had to be. Of course, I would be in my father's house, in my father's presence. And then if you fast forward in Jesus' ministry to the end of his ministry, when he's hanging on the cross and he's completing the work for which he came to take the sin of the world, past, present, future on himself as, as the Son of God, it says this, when he's just before he passes from his, his life on earth as a man on the cross, it says Jesus calls out in a loud voice, Father. So again, there's that same word, Abba. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. So from the beginning, when he was a young boy, all the way through to his death, he knew he was safe in the Father's hands. And that's why as he's expiring on the cross, he says, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. The safest place in the universe. And he knew that was true. And then also this statement by Jesus in John chapter 5. Uh, when they're asking him questions, he gave him an answer. He says, very truly, I tell you, the son. And for me, this is one of the most defining passages of who Jesus was, what he did as the son of God, what his task was as he walked the earth uh, that first time he came as a son of the living God. He said, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. You know, it's just a statement of intimate intimacy, this intimate relationship Jesus had day in and day out with his loving Father. And then he says, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. What a great example for our way of living. This is what we're made for, is to have the same union and experience, this intimate union and relationship with the Father the way Jesus did. He says, for the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these. We have to remember that Jesus, when he walked the earth, he found his entire identity in who he was as the son of God the Father. The way he saw himself, the way he saw his purpose, the way he lived, Everything he did, everything he said, it flowed out of his clear awareness that his core identity was found in who he was as the son of God, the father. And, and he describes this in Hebrews. There's a great passage, Hebrews 1.3. This is a definition of this reality. It says the son, speaking of Jesus, 
is the radiance of God's glory, the ex the exact representation of God's being. See, Jesus was an exact representation. He was an expression. He was an extension of the Father as a person as he walked the earth. And it says he sustained all things by his word. And after he provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And so again, this, this, this is all related to this word, Abba. Abba, this relationship Jesus had, how everything he did as a man, even though he was God, it flowed from this intimate union with the Father. So he starts this prayer that he's teaching. He says to his disciples, I want you to call God Father Abba, just like I do. I'm inviting you into the same union, the same intimacy, the same relationship that I have with the Father. That's what I'm making available to you and to all who come to believe in me. And so what Jesus is doing is he's, he's making God's presence available. And that's why when you go on, it's his Father in heaven or in the heavens. Now, when you think of heaven, what do you think of? Where do you think heaven is? Most people, when they think of heaven, they think of someplace far away, maybe up in the sky, not really related to my everyday life. That maybe it's a place I'm going to go after I die. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go to this place where God is. I, I don't think many people comprehend and realize what this actually means. What in the heavens means, it, it means the place where God lives. It's where God's presence is. And do you know where God's presence is? God's presence is everywhere all at the same time. So that means that wherever we are, God is here with us. The presence of God is here with us. It's like Jesus when he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. After he completed his work, he said, I'll be with you always, every second of every day, whether you're aware of me, whether you're seeking me or not. God is with us and God is available to us. And this is what Jesus made available to us by his death and his resurrection. And we see that when the temple was torn from top to bottom when he died. And it was this powerful symbol of the presence of Almighty God that had not been available to humanity was now completely available to all people through belief in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And so Jesus starts with saying, Abba, Intimate, loving, available, safe haven presence. This loving presence. Father in heaven, you who are here with me all the time, like the air I breathe, that's what that means. And then here comes the first petition or the first command Jesus teaches us to pray. It's this, it's this petition, hallowed be thy name. And the word hallowed, it literally comes from the word holy, holy. And so what we're doing is we're commanding God to make his name holy. And when you think of a name, especially when you read the Bible, every name was symbolic of the essence of that person. You see, all through the Old Testament, they would name people based on who they were. Even Jesus means Savior, the one who saves. That's why God chose the name Jesus, because it, it was an expression of who Jesus the Messiah was for us in the world. He came to rescue us out of sin. And so this idea of hallowed be your name, what we're doing is we're asking God to basically holify or lift up or make precious in all the world starting in our own experience and through us and out into the world, God, make your name holy. Make your name known. Help people know, God, who you really are, not who we think you are. God, help us to come to know you for who you really are. And that's why the title of the message today for this petition is, um, it's, it's all about this prayer, this 
heart cry, God, make yourself real to me in my experience today. Just like Jesus experienced you, Father, I want to experience you in that same way. And that's what Jesus is offering us. He's saying, pray for this. Seek this. Know that this is what God wants. This is a prayer God will answer. And so Jesus is saying we are to cry out to God and say, God, make yourself known, make yourself real for who you really are is a loving, merciful, unconditionally loving, safe presence. And, and Father, we want, we want you and your reality, your presence to be more known to us. Lift up your name, lift up your presence in our own experience and through us to the world. Um, I want to read for you one thing from this little book that uh, I've recommended. It's a book by Daryl Johnson, who was the longtime preaching pastor at Glendale Presbyterian Church. He went on to be the preaching professor at Regent College. I actually took a class from him at one time years ago uh, on preaching up there when he was he was teaching. He's no longer teaching up there. Uh, when he wrote this book on the Lord's Prayer. And I, I want to read for you something that, to me, is related to this first part of uh, this teaching on prayer that we're looking at today. And, and what we have to remember is that exactly what he says here. You see, G this is what he says. Jesus is teaching us to ask the Father to do what only the Father can do. And this is the request. Father, you honor your name. You magnify your character. You manifest your personality. You make yourself real on earth as it is in heaven, in your actual presence. You enhance your reputation in all the universe. Yes, we will gladly be part of the process, but we cannot make it happen. God, we can't do this. God, only you can do this. So we cry out to you. We ask you, we command you, Father, make yourself real in our life, in our experience, and in our world as you actually are. And then this final statement, only you can display the glory of who you are. So, Father, please do it. I, I love that. I think that's that kind of sums up what we're looking at today. And there's there's one other passage I want to read as I close. This is Jesus' high priestly prayer before he went to the cross. This is one little segment from Jesus' heart cry to the Father before he went to the cross. His prayer for us and for the world. And I think it captures what Jesus' greatest passion was for the world, for each of us. He says, righteous Father. See, again, he's praying to the Father. Another one of these intimate moments Jesus had with the Father. He says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you, Father, known to them. And I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them. And that I myself may be in them. See, this, this is where we're starting with this prayer. This was the greatest desire of Jesus in, in line with the heart of the Father and the work of the Spirit. And it, it always has been, it always will be. This heart cry of God, when Jesus says, continue to make yourself known, Father, in order that the love that the Father had for Jesus. He says, the love you have for me may be in them, that they may come to know you, Father, and your love the way I know you, Father. He's praying for that, for you, for me. And it says that Jesus right now is interceding before the throne of heaven. The Word of God says that. He's interceding, he's praying for you, that you would have this experience of God. And so, as I close today, we need to know that Jesus is inviting us to enter in to God's deepest desires, God's deepest desires, that we would know God the Father for who God the Father actually is, not who we think God is, because of all the misconceptions, because of all the painful things we've been through, that, that the enemy uses to try to get us, to deceive us into believing things about God that's not true at all. 
Jesus is wanting us to know who the Father actually is so that we can then experience that. We can experience the life God wants to give us because we're trusting the Father. We're looking to the Father like that child with their Abba when they go home, wanting to listen to the Father, learn from the Father, be led by the Father because they trust that Father so that then we, as we experience the truth of who God is, we can then share that with the world. And so as I close, you know, I want to ask you, do you have a relationship with God that you would consider to be intimate? Do you think of God as your safe place? The place you run to when things are hard or confusing, or maybe when you're celebrating, when, when you want to rejoice about something. Is God that primary presence that you turn to in all things, whether you're going through something painful or difficult or something wonderful? Because again, it doesn't really matter what we're going through in this lifetime, because the reality is God is always with us. The question is, is our heart turning towards the Father the way, as Jesus said, that we read today was his heart was always looking to the Father. He only did that which the Father was doing. And that's how we got to the cross. That's how we live the life he was made for. And the only way we're going to experience the life we're made for is if we grow into an understanding and experience of knowing who the Father actually is in our own experience. So how is that going for you? How is your relationship with God? Is it moving in that direction? Or is your perception of God, your understanding of God, something that really doesn't give you much of a desire for pursuing God, for being with God, for learning from God, for bringing everything to God? for wanting to know what God thinks and feels about what you're going through right now. And, and you know that. I know that in terms of where is my relationship right now? Am I seeking God the way Jesus was seeking the Father? And if not, I wonder, why not? What is it that's going on in your life that might uh, create resistance or uh, maybe an, an aversion or a, a lack of desire that you're looking to other people, other things for your answers instead of God? the God who loves you perfectly. And if you are experiencing a wonderful, intimate, growing relationship with Jesus, how can you keep growing in that knowledge of God, as Jesus did, so that you can better express God's presence, God's kingdom, God's rule and reign, the reality of God's presence to your world? How can you keep growing in that? Where's your growing edge in that relationship as you look to the Father in your life today? So with that in mind, let's pray. Let's pray together. God, thank you for this teaching. Lord Jesus, thank you for the, the fact that it was your primary desire to make uh, the truth, the reality of who God the Father is known to this world that you, Lord Jesus, and the Father and the Spirit created. God, you created us for yourself. And as the, those, those classic words, our hearts are restless until we find rest in you, in our relationship with you. And I pray for all of us, God, that no matter what we're going through, help us to be honest about, is our heart seeking to grow in our intimate relationship with you, God the Father? the way Jesus was constantly in pursuit of the Father when he walked the earth. Because Jesus knew who the Father actually was. We have so much going on in us that, that dilutes that and pollutes that reality. So God, whatever in us is not based on the reality, the truth, the holy, actual truth of who you are, God, make your name holy in our life. Lift yourself up in our life. Free us of our misconceptions of who you are so, God, we would more easily run to you, seek you, follow you, so, God, you can give us your kingdom. We would experience more of your living presence in us and through us today. We pray all these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks again for joining us in worship this morning. 
We trust this hour has been a blessing to you. As we prepare to take God's light into the world, we'd like to invite you to join our congregation in person Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock in our beautiful sanctuary, where our terrific praise band leads the music, or in our chapel, where we sing the great hymns of the faith led by our choir. If you're feeling disconnected from the church, especially if you aren't able to leave home, please call or email Nancy in the office and we'll have one of our caring deacons reach out to you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Thank you.